Do y'all remember this piece of junk? If not, I'll give you a little refresher. This is a 2019 Yamaha VXC Wave Runner. I bought this a few months ago on Marketplace. I paid about $2,500 for it, only to discover that it is a little bit more than just mystery damage. It's pretty obvious, actually. The listing said it needed a few parts, mainly electrical stuff, such as the fuses and uh, the start button. We installed those. It still wasn't starting, so I replaced the ignition coil. Still not starting. So we started digging into it a little bit more, looking for the starter. And then while we were looking for the starter, we found a massive hole in the block. So a little bit more than mystery damage. It's pretty obvious damage. So this thing was on the back burner for a while, trying to figure out what to do with it, getting your guys' advice if I should just take the loss on it. But I'm not going to be making anything. I can maybe sell it for parts and get maybe half my money back, if that. It's not looking very good. There's a few options we could do. We could replace the motor. Uh, that costs around $2,500 to $3,000. And I would have to travel like to Miami. It's the closest place for it. It's like around four hours from me. Or just wait around and find a rec ski, which luckily I did. I found a rec ski. I couldn't buy the whole thing because he already parted out most of it. But I was able to buy the motor off of him. The motor does have quite a bit of hours. I believe it's 450 hours around that, which uh, is up there in miles, but he said it was well taken care of. He did the monthly maintenance on it and he's owned it for most of his life. So it's hard to trust people anymore, but that's what he said. And here it is uh, up close. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not really clean, uh, a little bit of rust in some areas. It's definitely been in the salt water for sure. But uh, he did crank it and it turned over. Uh, it didn't start because it doesn't have gas or anything hooked up to it, but it sounded okay when it was cranking. It sounded healthy at least. But of course, there is a few problems with it though. As you can see, the exhaust is kind of half off. And that is because the exhaust bolts were broken off. There's only two that came out out of the seven, I believe. So we have four we have to extract somehow. That's all rusted in there. Never done anything that bad before. I've extracted bolts before a long time ago. I try to avoid it because it's such a pain. Something I don't really want to do, but this deal was kind of hard to hard to pass up. I paid a thousand dollars for it with a couple extra parts too thrown in that I need for it. So uh, we're going to try to make it work. A couple techniques we can use. We can drill it out. That's going to take a long time, especially with four of them. We could try to weld on a new nut. That's probably going to be my first option. And if none of those work, we're going to try to figure out something else. So first thing we're going to do is try to fix up this motor, extract those bolts, replace the starter because the starter looks pretty rough and then we can start digging into the actual ski itself and pull out the old bad motor. Let's hope this works.
we just got a lot done actually. First thing, the obvious thing, the motor that I pulled out, <laughs> there's a, a hole that you can see all the way through to the other side with, so two massive holes. The one hole I didn't even know about. Uh, taking it out wasn't super difficult. Luckily, this one's not very corroded, so all the bolts came out very easy. It's a little bit of weird angles to get some hoses, but nothing too bad. I, I think the older sea dos I've done have been worse because those things are really tight. There's a lot of bending around to unhook stuff. Luckily, this was, I think, probably easier. Here are both the motors. The new slash used one, the one we're putting in, uh, I got the stuck bolts out. Wasn't too difficult. I did damage a couple of the threads, so I'm waiting for a tool to come in to replace those threads and make it all good again and just clean it all up and make sure it's not gonna have any more problems for a future user if this thing lasts that long. As for this motor, besides the holes in it, it's not that corroded, which is all pretty good news. Comparing it to this one, it's a lot cleaner, uh, a lot easier to get the bolts out of. There is a few parts we're gonna have to switch over. There's a temperature gauge over here that's broken on this one, so I'm gonna switch that out. Also, we got the starter installed in that, and that wasn't too bad outside of the jet ski, but if this thing was in there, it would have been a really pain to replace that. So I'm glad we're doing it now. There's also a couple other things I want to replace. There is a lot of rusted clamps that I'm going to replace with stainless steel ones. There's this mount right here for the air box that needs replaced along with this one. It needs to be swapped over. I did damage one of the plugins that goes to the exhaust. We're going to have to replace that. Figure out what that's called and replace it. I ripped it out of its plug, so maybe we can fix it, but not likely. So we still have some work to do before actually installing this new motor. Uh, swap all those things over. I want to change the oil, put new spark plugs in it, do all the basic maintenance while it's outside of it. Also need to install a couple things for the actual drive shaft. I think it's called a drive shaft. We'll call it a drive shaft. Uh, this was missing out of it, the whole end right here. Also ordered some other pieces that need to go in here, such as this rubber little gasket that goes in here. This little hosing needs to go in here over the drive shaft too. I was planning on removing the top from the bottom, that way it makes it all easier and I can actually get in there and clean some stuff. But I learned that this is all glued together, unlike the sea -Doo I did. It's really easy to remove on a sea -Doo, but this would have been very difficult, so I had to pull it out the old-fashioned way. While everything is taken apart, I want to go ahead and clean this whole engine bay pretty good, get all the water out, get all the old oil and junk out of it, make it look a little bit better. Some more bad news, which is pretty devastating bad news because it's going to set us back a little bit. I pulled the fuse panel out and I noticed that the fuse I replaced was really broken and kind of smoky and it looks like it melted all the way through. So I took it apart to see what was going on underneath it and it was like all kinds of corroded and just a bunch of water sitting in there. So that was most likely a problem when we were before we were even starting on this thing. That's why we're not getting power to the dash or anything like that. So unfortunate because this is like a $300 part to replace. I'm gonna look around, see if I can find one cheaper in a local area. Maybe we can get lucky. If not, uh, we need this part to run. <sighs> keeps coming, it just keeps coming. This thing, I don't, I don't like this thing right now. <laughs> we're, just, we're just gonna focus on the positive. The positive, we got the motor out at least. So next I'm gonna go ahead and swap over all these parts, change the oil, oil filter, spark plugs, get all that stuff ready to be put in here. After we install all that, we can move on to in here, clean it all up, make it look a little bit better than what it is right now. And then we can install this drive shaft, all that kind of stuff that goes along with it, and get it ready to install. And in the meantime, we're gonna look for some replacement parts. Let's do it.
Okay, I believe it is ready for the motor to go back in. There was so many missing parts and just stuff I had to find and get to get this thing ready to put back in. Starting off with the first few things, I got a new wire to replace that one I stripped out. The same guy I bought this piece from, I bought the motor from, so I asked him if he had any other parts that I needed, like the fuse panel. He had that, I bought that from him, along with the steering cable, which I also needed because that was not here. Uh, along with the steering cable, I'm still waiting for one more part to come in. It is the little bracket that holds it up here. Uh, I need that. That is completely gone, so I ordered that part. This is acting as my workbench currently because I have no room in this garage. You may notice I ordered a new impeller along with the impeller rod and that whole like little assembly because it was missing a lot of pieces in that. Along with that, that was missing. There are some bolts in there that was missing. And also, this thing was on here. This is a reverse mechanism and this thing does not have reverse. So evidently they took out the good jet pump and threw in a bad one that had the reverse from a different ski, I'm assuming. So we went ahead and just removed this completely because we don't have reverse, so we don't need it. I'm sure there's gonna be more missing pieces once we put this thing back together and get it running. We're gonna find some more things that are wrong and we're gonna have to replace it. But I am really determined to get this thing running. <laughs> I just hope I don't spend all my money on it because it's already looking like that. This motor is put back together. It is ready to go back in. I fixed the stripped out holes that I messed up when I was removing the uh, bolts that were stuck in there and sheared off. Got that fixed, replaced a lot of the clamps with stainless steel ones. That way we don't have to worry about them rusting out if this thing ever rusts again. One thing I'm still missing are the bolts that hold on the ignition coils. I need those. Uh, not sure what size it is, but they are missing and I need them. Oil has changed, new oil filter, new spark plugs. It is ready to go back in and start up. First try. Pretty please.
I can't say I'm surprised because it's still not starting. Let me bring you up to speed on what all we have replaced in this thing. First main thing, the motor, completely replaced, swapped out. A lot of the jet drive, pretty much all of the wiring, the fuse panel, the computer, the wiring harness, all that has been replaced. Only thing left in here to not be replaced is anything to do with the fuel and the dash, which neither of those are working either. Talking about the computer and why I had to replace it, you can see there's some corrosion in the inside right here and it's missing at least six pins. So obviously this thing is no good. Guess how much that thing is? Around $700 just for that. And that brings us to the wiring harness. Obviously, since the pins are broken, there's pins that are stuck in the wiring harness. Unfortunately, you can't just buy one of the new clips. You have to replace the whole thing. So that brought us back a little bit more. Luckily, I was able to find both the computer and the wiring harness from the same guy I bought the motor from. I paid $850 for both of those, which is not a bad deal considering this online is around $700 to $800 by itself. And then the wiring harness is another $400. Now, unfortunately, this isn't just compatible with this year. I bought this one, it's like a 2016 or a 2017 with the 2017 wiring harness. The only thing I had to replace to make that work is this little sensor right here. It's the tell if the ski is upside down, then it won't be able to start. I had to switch this over with the older model. That's the only way I can make this whole wiring harness work, but that saved me at least like $500 doing it that way. So now we're all caught up to speed on what I had to replace in that little minute and a half video, uh, $800 worth of stuff. So we're all caught up to speed now but at least it is cranking. It is <laughs> cranking, it sounds healthy at least. It is not starting though, obviously. First things you obviously check are fuel, spark, ignition, all that stuff. Fuel checked first, no fuel. So we're gonna fix that first. I unhooked the fuel line from the fuel pump itself and it's not even pumping out any fuel. So we have to figure out what's going on with that if the fuel pump is bad, which hopefully not. Uh, figure that out. If the fuel pump is bad, we can replace that. If it's something to do in the wiring, we have to figure that out. Along with it not pumping fuel, the dash itself is not lighting up or working. I haven't tested anything with it yet, so I'm not really sure if it's a wiring issue or if it's the whole thing itself. So we'll have to figure that out. So that makes me question, does the dash have to be working to engage the fuel pump? Because there's wirings going from both of them, which I think it's to tell how much fuel is still in it but does that need to be working to be able to make this thing start? Not sure. So we still have a lot of stuff to figure out. We need to figure out why it's not pumping fuel, why the dash isn't working, and then once those are figured out, then we can figure out if it's starting or not. I'm gonna save that for another episode. Hopefully you guys can give me some feedback on what you think it is, what the issue might be, why it's not pumping fuel, if the dash has to be working to make this thing start. A lot of that needs to be figured out before we can move on. I don't want to have to replace the dash. That's another $400. Y'all don't have to tell me. I know this is a huge waste of money, but I am determined to get this thing going. So with that being said, if you guys aren't following my channel, consider it. This helps me bring in more viewers and more funding for more projects and more videos and helps out a lot. If you want to consider doing that, it's free to do. You can unsubscribe anytime you want. This does help me out though, a lot. Another thing, I also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a TikTok. You guys can follow me there if you want to. I post a lot of behind the scenes there, so you guys can check that out if you want, if you have that. Other than that, we are close. This thing is at least cranking. Hopefully by the next episode, it will be in the water running. Stay tuned, next episode. If you have any ideas on what this could be, leave them in the comment section below. You can tell me how much of an idiot I am in the comment section or how much money I'm putting into this thing. I already know. I know it's dumb. But we're going to get this thing running. Stay tuned for next episode.